Okay, so in your book, you also mentioned a decentralized taxi app, decentralized taxi net. Could you, so let's say I, I want to get a taxi. I use, I've used ride sharing apps and stuff. This is, we see them everywhere. We've got them on our phone. It's amazing. It already seems like, you know, that's a, quite a thriving, new, cool marketplace. So how would uh, decentralized, how would it work? Say I've got this app, what happens? Well, it did, this differs first of all from existing solutions in that it is decentralized. There's no owner here. There's no uh, need to take rent on, or add fees to the price or in any way get involved with anything other than the idea of getting riders to their um, drivers. Okay, uh, so when you say owner, you mean there's no sort of, there's no big sort of middle company, which is, it's again, it's this idea that the, the app itself is somehow owned by the participants. Yes, the app is in fact just a protocol in a sense. It is a way of computers communicating with each other. Uh, everyone would have a version of that on their device and those devices then communicate with the other devices to create the final network. That's it's such a, just that concept of, that's the concept which I keep um, struggling with, but which keeps surprising me like, oh my God, is that possible? It's this idea that the phones are talking, that the network is between all of the devices rather than going to what it currently does, which is a middle sort of big server and then sending requests and getting things back from the middle. It's just that bit seems to have gone and it's a direct network. Is that right? Uh, yes, basically. Um, well, very much so, actually. Uh, um, I describe it as the last taxi app ever made because this one wouldn't be something you would need to move away from once it works. It, it's just a marketplace for drivers and riders. So um, you could have many different flavors of that app, the way it looks, the way, but they're all working on the same marketplace or it's at least the same protocol. Uh, marketplaces become protocols, really. Okay. It is, it is the kind of future for this. Uh, we actually do have uh, projects like this already, although I think that the version I'm describing will probably be a bit later on, maybe 2023, who, who knows? Um, but we do have versions of that now that are showing up. One really interesting one I think is called Alpha City, where an Uber driver had left and, and started his own. He just was like, I'm gonna decentralize this, and it, it did, I think. So uh, I don't know much about that project, but there are already uh, things beginning in this direction. However. It's gonna look different. Let's say I go on my phone, is it gonna look different from the sort of ones I'm, I'm used to at the no. moment? Not, so not what, at all. Go on, talk to us well, about the, the look of something is not the same as the actual app. So you've got a number of layers. Rather than having one company that makes the look, designs the UI, designs the marketplace, then contains the marketplace, then operates the marketplace, and then you know curates that marketplace, um, these are now decentralized systems are much more layered or distributed even in their layering than that. So uh, how the UI looks is really up to, you know. The anyone. UI meaning the user interface, oh, the way it actually looks on, on my phone. Yes, the UI, the user experience as well, UX, um, the experience of that app, it, 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 that can be tailored differently for different people and people prefer different versions. Some people want a very technical looking one, others will want a bubbly simple one. But ultimately, to, de to describe it best, I think uh, within the book we describe it like this. So you, you hold, you're standing there in the street, you press the pickup button, you know, whatever, you know, I want a taxi. Uh, your phone then connects to the local marketplace finds a driver that matches your requirements, your location without any personal, personal identification, uh, and all of that is released to the prospective drivers. So we're, we're able to broadcast a signal that somebody's looking for a, for a cab, okay. and all the drivers, but we're not broadcasting your phone number, you haven't used your phone number to sign up, you haven't used your email address. Why is that important? Why do, why do I care about that? Like, don't they need that to know who I am? Well, whether you care about it or not, it's not necessary. So uh, yeah. people who do care about it will be happy to hear that they Why don't have they to care sign about up. That? Um, well, people are quite wary of their privacy and there's fairly good reasons for that. First of all, you're giving your email address to the company, so they're using that for other, you know, old manner of things. Plus you're revealing your identity to perhaps people you don't trust. Uh, you, you, wanna, you wanna look after your identity as much as possible. It's very sacred in a decentralized world. You don't just hand it out, you know, whenever you feel like it. It's, it's, when it's required, if it's ever required, it's required for very specific reasons. It should be transparent and known to you. So in this case, this is not one of them. What they do need to know, however, is that, that you, the drivers would need to know your history it's on quite, the network. Yeah, sorry, it's, it's a quite a strange thing there where when I think about the current system, so if, I, if I'm talking to, I, I send a message and a driver responds and he can see my picture and he knows some of my details, I give these companies sort of my email address or my phone number. And it's almost like I trust that, that company, the middle big centralized company to kind of guard my, they're like the sort of big brother, they're watching out for me. So whilst I don't want to give out my information, I sort of trust them to be 
the, the big bully who if anything goes wrong they'll enforce it for me do you know what I mean oh sure does that work differently yeah and, the, and there's some value to that yeah and you can definitely you so can feel safe you know with them watching my back or absolutely it's not a very good solution it's okay. not a very good solution in terms of engineering but it's definitely there's some value in it, it doesn't mean it's completely worthless at all it's okay. certainly at the, at the earlier stages before we have these properly engineered networks then that would be a valid way of doing that but then with that comes a lot of downsides. So we've seen the ex examples of where that's failed quite dramatically. We've seen lots of scandals in that regard. We know that those central companies get hacked quite a lot, that okay. there's constant leaks that's of all your information. There's, I mean, th this list of why that doesn't work is much longer than the list of why it could be useful. So there are ways around that sort of sense of security I have with the centralized model. There is security also built into the decentralized model. It well, isn't just there's no one watching out for me or, you know, I have to keep everything hidden otherwise. Well, there's much more security okay, sorry, yeah, go on. In, in terms of this model, but we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, the, the idea that you have a, a sense of security with these institutions is fair and uh, don't want to take that away from every, anyone. Of course, you can continue with that. What, what we will eventually demonstrate is that the security level of these systems is an order of magnitude higher. So that's brilliant. That's so, brilliant. Well, we have to prove that first. Yeah. I mean, it's no good me just sitting here saying it. We can, we can describe that process in some detail, obviously not to bore people, but so basically we first, we first contact the driver. Uh, so you could be subscribed at this point. You're, you're, Called the, you press the button and the drivers are aware of a driver, of a rider needing a ride. Yeah. So they now have, a, a, they need a certain sense of security too. It's not fair to expect them to just pick up anyone. Yeah. It's not based on your face or your identity or, or your country or your this, that, the other. What it's based on is your history and your reputation within that network. Now, if you don't have a reputation, there is a point at which you'll need to build it up and there are things you can do to do that. And that's how these things start. There is a downside to that, but not very much. The reputation is like, what, like a sort of a profile would be at the moment, sort of a, you know, a a history, five stars. A history of disputes, a history of any disputes. And if there are no disputes, that's good. If there are some disputes, they can be looked at by the driver and drivers make that choice. Ultimately, they have, a, they have to have a sense of safety in, in their work. They didn't want to go out and be picking up people who, you know, axe murderers at the side of the street. So we have that, and that mechanism is pretty well understood now. Uh, again, reputation in decentralized networks is solid. It's not something that anyone can modify, and it's also based on actual rides, which are, it's provable that that person rode. You just can't come in and say, uh, you know, slag someone off and you just get away with it. You have to have been involved in a previous transaction that the system has verified cryptographically. So that's, yeah, that's something the blockchain is really obviously yes. designed for is to, to prove that something happened beyond any doubt yes. that something. so it's a much better sort of historical record of, yes. of what really happened you can't really dispute it in the same way yeah absolutely well it's it you could dispute it but you'd be you know yeah. butting your head against mathematics okay. yet again um and it doesn't have to be just the blockchain there's cryptographic solutions by themselves that can do this but never mind so when you do that, you can either go, you might be calling the marketplace, the whole marketplace. That might just mean the immediate, you know, 50 miles around you. Uh, that would be a raw entry into the marketplace. So there's not, you, you then have a, you can then see at that point drivers or your, your device will be on automatic as it is in these days. And, and it will be looking for drivers with a certain reputation. Some people don't care about the, 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 the state of the cab other people's other people do so for instance if i if i'm a student i don't really care and i'm you know some young dude who's kind of i might take a, a ride in a cab that's dusty and messy and i don't care it's got dogs in the back that's but maybe it's cheaper yeah it would probably be cheaper yeah. um that's a marketplace whereas i don't want to take that right away you know i don't want to force everyone to have to live like that and on the other side of you know you might want to get into a cab that you know the driver is very you know well presented, yep. uh, whether he or she is, has got, you know, a cab that's clean and, and it might be a fancier vehicle. Those people want that kind of ride and we don't, we have to provide that too. Yep. So the marketplace really offers all these options and what, what this is, is you have those options back. So you can really choose. But isn't that, can't we currently do this? Like, couldn't someone just make a normal centralized app, which currently offers much more choice than, than you know, other apps, and couldn't they sort of take part of the market by doing that? I don't so, understand what's, so far what I see is that the difference so far is that it's anonymous when I've called them, they don't actually, have, haven't shared any private information, that seems to be different. Um, what else so far is different? Uh, well, not much, we'll okay. have to get into a bit more detail, but 
the reality is that number one a big difference is that this marketplace is very fully open this is a free market uh number two would be that your contact what does that mean, free market what do you mean by it that? means that there's no one interfering with it for their own in their own agenda there's no company going well you know these guys i don't want i want you going with this because you will make more money from you taking that ride than this ride i see Re eliminating people who aren't cost effective like drivers who you know all of that's gone oh, so the guy with the dusty car might be charging less and the normal centralized company and they wouldn't say, let we don't in. want that we're not going to yeah. make much money plus they don't have very good mechanisms for safety so they have requirements that they wouldn't be allowed to put that guy in it these people have to be there and these people have to be there whereas rather than forcing the entire market to come under one set of people's average rules for what constitutes safe or appropriate uh, these markets are allow you to have much more information on the client side so the client can decide what is you know safe and appropriate what their expectation of safety is what their expectation of cleanliness is what their ex and that's all pretty much on automatic if you want it to be or you can have a little you know look and say oh, i don't mind cabs like this so if, yeah if you don't want to do that much thinking you can just say all right i trust this service to pre-vet people for me or something. yeah nearest cab um and machine learning will come into this ai will eventually come into this and things get very exciting at that point um and also there's no one taking any rent on that process and rent we define as extra fees that are not necessarily required for the process Process. So there's no ownership model or company that needs to take a bunch of money to continue paying back its investment or advertising to get more clients. This network doesn't care if it has more clients. Uh, drivers join because it's a viable way to you know earn money. Um, and of course, at that point, you can have straight away people will say oh well that's that's not safe enough they maybe people don't understand these mechanisms and say well i still want someone to vet and that's perfectly fine too so in the first case somebody connected to the raw marketplace and that's how most of us would probably do it but you may want to join a service within this marketplace that offers curated drivers you know very family friendly or uh, safe safe well vetted drivers where they've had to go into a company and be interviewed and that's also possible you could even have the current existing taxi service live inside this marketplace and then they add a fee to that but the fee is now transparent that's all the fee is now transparent so everyone can see where that money's going oh, the fee is currently transparent don't we no, of course currently not up? No, we don't know what amount the driver gets from any ride we take. We don't know what gets yeah, lost true. in the system. We don't know where it's going. We don't know who's being, you know, we might be getting a cheap drive, but we're putting the drivers into a horrible situation, working to the bone, and that's not good for anyone. It certainly, you know, doesn't promote a good, healthy society yeah. when you do that. So, um, no, we have, we, we can have a taxi service, like for instance, a pet friendly service. So, you know, drivers who accept pets and or a VIP service for only for you know corporate events where you know that whenever you call when you connect when you're on your app you just say yep this is in VIP service and you've got a list of companies that offer that who go through their own process as a co consumer you have more options and you can look through those options or leave them alone and ignore them and just say VIP and it picks the first one on the list these are these are the things and, and that doesn't mean that the app gets all full you've still got one button going pick up you know so I don't That's see how that, that can't be done now. It just maybe isn't being done, but I can imagine that an app which does allow you to choose VIP or this or that. What's, what's different about that part of it? Okay, two, two things. Again, no company taking the fees, no company taking rent. So they could do it right now, but they're going to have to do it at profit. And that's where it's going to, that's where it's going to end up. They could be very reasonable with that and they'd have very good success. I mean, that would be successful. They'd have to recapture the market from the existing uh, companies. But if they did that, they would have probably a long life. But then again, you're dealing with central computers, which have their own set of problems. You're dealing with the problems of hacking. You're dealing with the problems of scale because it, as things get bigger, then you start getting all this um, sort of bottlenecking going on. And ultimately, there are very, very few companies that would open up their marketplace completely for other companies to join in. You know, this is a marketplace that allows many, many businesses to work within it. As I'm describing all the VIP services, family services, you know, it's, it's un it would be unusual for a centralized company, even if they technically could achieve this. But then there's another thing. When you make that call, as it were, when you press that button, your phone connects directly to the phone of the chosen driver. And there's a way you, you can, we can even talk for 10 minutes about how you choose that driver or it could be on automatic. When that happens, you're connected with an encrypted connection, your phone to their phone. And now at this point, you have the usual experience. You can see where they are. They, they can see where you are. They can now, you now have, you can now reveal more information to each other and they can know who they're looking for. They can now see your face. So they recognize you at the side of the street. And 
you can of course see about the driver and cancel it if you feel that you know if you've got more time to look at them but you know you, you'll have an expectation of I'll just, safety. Let's just stop it there. So the, the difference here is that my phone will connect directly to the driver's phone. Whereas normally my phone will go to the server, server to the driver's phone, driver's phone to the server. There'll be some sort of middleman. In this instance, I'm connecting absolutely directly with the driver themselves. Yes, nobody else in the network exists but you and a series of drivers. That series of drivers is selected by your phone. Okay, and the benefit and of that? Well, it's a direct connection. There's, a, there's a, again, the same benefits over and over again. The same benefits of safety, security, privacy, plus you can then open up an encrypted channel between them and talk and, you know, normal phone call. Uh, nobody else knows what's going on here. You and the driver are in an agreement. And the second you, you, the cab would arrive, then you have this lovely thing where you can make sure with a little logo it'll tell you you're looking for this person and it shows you their face and also shows you a special code which your phones can see and the reason for that is some people used to get into the wrong cabs and one poor young lady yeah. got killed by getting into what she thought was her cab but wasn't so we, there's mechanisms for that too once you sit in that cab this is where it starts to really get interesting as you sit in that cab your phone then contacts a number of your friends silently and everyone knows this is happening it can be uh, five of your friends and if anything were to happen or anything were to go wrong the entire record of what's happened your position and location is continually being broadcast to just your friends not to a central server and other people which but a lot of people wouldn't allow that because they don't want their location being known to other people but when you've chosen a group of friends that provides another level of safety so at any point if anything goes wrong you've at least got a straight button you can press to emergency and they'll be notified or in co of course because this is a decentralized marketplace and there are no companies limiting what can happen you could even subscribe to security services that's important for certain people in certain locations so that when they get in this cab and the, the exchange begins and the drive starts security services know exactly where they are all the time and again, that is that person's phone doing that work, straight out. How do you mean that? that that's that person's phone doing that a work? A phone what is a computer. A phone is a computer. It's okay. a full working computer. So that phone is doing the work of broadcasting. As opposed to a server would be doing it right As now. As opposed to it relaying to a server and the server relaying, relaying it out again, which is something that could be done again, but we're just eliminating all the unnecessary things. This is what needs to happen. The fastest way to get the data from your phone to the people who need it is directly straight across the network to those other and people. What if my battery dies or something whilst we're in well, If your battery dies, your battery dies. If your battery dies, then oh, in this current system as well, you don't have a signal. So uh, it will also be able to send the signal of the driver's phone, who can also, you could also simply have the driver's phone do the same thing. And it can do that, it can do that without knowing who those friends are, so we're not betraying the privacy of the friends. Again, this is all correctly okay. done. Okay, so, uh, so what happens next? Well, uh, at that point, uh, we would assume the ride would continue as normal. And when the actual ride began, what happened, well, what one of many methods of how we can do the payment. And again, we're not using traditional currencies here, we're using crypto. So immediately both uh, the amount or the approximate amount of the fare would go into escrow and that's handled by the network. So that means it's just sitting there, no one can touch it. And there are rules associated with that. These will be decided over time, which works, whatever works best for people. If you're in a small town, it may not be necessary. If you know everyone in a big city, you might want to have that. And the reason for that is if something goes wrong, uh, you change the incentive of the driver and the client to resolve it. If both of them are going to lose the money, then probably both of them are going to need to, you know, work a, be a little more calm in that, in that regard. Uh, if the driver is the only one losing the money, it puts a lot of pressure on the driver. Like the client can just go, well, you know what, I don't care. You were wrong. Dispute, dispute. So you've got to be very careful what, how that's positioned and that will take discussion and time to work out the correct balance. Um, most likely it'll be, it goes into escrow. If there's a dispute, you lose your fare you pay for that dispute it puts a little more pressure and the driver also pays for that dispute and that means the money's lost goes into the network and is just vanished no one's paid but and the client loses money um, but if everything goes well once the drive concludes that once the drive is finished then the money is simply transferred to the driver everything is done finished and reviews can then be made you know i liked it five star whatever I didn't like it thing was dirty and we can even have those reviews possibly although i haven't really worked out a mechanism for this but i'm sure other people have where you can place a review without revealing that you replace you know place that review because i think people 
uh, sometimes when you're face to face with someone, you don't want to go, oh yeah, that was terrible, and it pops up on their phone, oh, thanks a lot, mate, you know? So there are mechanisms where we can even have that privacy maintained, like it, the system will wait till, you know, two or three days pass to release it, releases it as a verified rider, but doesn't say which one. Um, and then from that record, we're starting to create a real understanding of the marketplace that we share with everyone. And that's we, meaning the network, the people who design these sort of things will have that shared with everyone. I mean, your phone is the one that actually gathers that from the, the, the system and shows it to you. So when you next do a ride, you can see those reviews and you have a very, very high level of information and transparency in that. Ultimately, the difference between this uh, type of system and the old one is they will look exactly the same to the client. Okay. Uh, what we will however have here is much uh, more efficient service in terms of the engineering but forget that for the consumer the prices will obviously be much lower because you're reducing up to you know 30, 40, 50, 60 percent of the price straight away. Because you don't have to pay the middleman uh, yes. percentage every time. Uh, you have a much higher expectation of real safety and real security because there, it, it's, it's, there's no distance between what can be done and what is being done whereas with you know companies they have to lock things down and close things up a bit to keep their competitive advantage that's all gone so it's the best solution that every stage that engineers can possibly create for your safety, the understanding of the data, the understanding of the information you've got as a consumer. All of this um, is the upgrade. And mainly, I think one of the most interesting features is that because it is an open protocol, because it's something that's just shared across the world, when you travel to another country, you're using exactly the same system. You're very familiar with it already. It's all in your own language still, but it's working in a foreign language marketplace. Um, and you get to have this wonderful unified experience while having apps that everyone can have to suit their needs. And I might want, you know, a nice, happy looking bubbly app and another person might want a high tech sophisticated looking measures all the distances and shows and that's the wonder of, of this choice so and we don't have to keep writing the same software over and over again because every company is different and they don't share their software now we can have this uh, thing that can be built by you know thousands of people improved over years to the point where it becomes magnificently powerful the best our planet can offer the best our species can offer the best our programmers can offer it's that nice thing again where the the, the network itself has been has become again that tool layer that underneath there so everyone still wants to to take a taxi i can still get a taxi the driver can still make money from from being a taxi driver and possibly more because he doesn't have to pay the middleman as well and this layer though that facilitates that all is owned by everyone and it's not actually taking a middle bit so it just becomes pure service again over which the same services are being provided and there's the security concerns are addressed it's i it's just again it's that wonderful flip which is hard for me to understand you know how the ownership of the, the that network itself makes makes such a difference you know it does and on this businesses can thrive so you can actually use this network for all sorts of things like businesses can connect into it use it for delivery services it can be extended to delivery services and on and on and on Another part that I also enjoy is that it would work very well as well in a small village as it would in a city because in a city you have more complex requirements. The marketplace works just as well there. Um, or, well, that's where you'd kind of want to stress test it in these very complex city environments. But when you get to a village, it's actually to the point where it, it could be useful just to be able to call up your, you know, you know who it is. It's Joe. You want Joe to pick you, pick you up and you press Joe and Joe then knows where you are straight away. And all that software is available to a tiny little town without having to, you know, for them to spend a fortune to get you know there's a lot of places that don't, aren't covered by these really fancy ride sharing services that could kind of use them so we have that wonderful extension of the technology into nooks and crannies that everyone's forgotten about and i would probably guess that a lot of the world lives in those nooks and crannies um that's and fantastic so the village and the so rural country now the way places they'll have access to the same network and with all its complexity and all its potential and variables as people are using in the city. It will be the same infrastructure they're able to build on. All the power, all the technology, all the work, all the design, all the manufacturing and engineering that went into the hyper, hyper stressful city environment would be available if needed to tiny little villages in the middle of nowhere with like 200 people and they just want to call their mate and tell them, come pick me up, here I am. And so again, this, and this network that's created is just being sort of developed, I guess over time it's being improved upon by the community who are and would that the net itself would that how would it self-fund in the same way as like the, the electricity grid yes. would it 
yes, it would be able to store, take, it would, it can very easily take a fee. Again, you would know exactly what that fee was. It would be very, very, very small. And then it could use that regionally for areas. It could use that even to help. Maybe you could have the system where drivers were able to finance themselves a car, um, where people were able to, you know, where the network was able to release funds. It would be done through voting and stuff in regions and places where people could, you know, use that money to do something. Or it can in indeed hire um, it's so a programmers. people, well, not just program, well, of course, programmers, but also people who, who might be able to help with the service. Some places might need phone calls. Some people might not be able to use an app. Mm. Some people might just want to be able to make a phone call to a taxi service. It could work just the same for them. It could organize that part of the yeah. deal. So you take away like that, that, that sort of the current situation we have where there is the, the guy in the middle. So a lot of money is instantly freed up and it'll probably take much less to actually run sort of core services which can better the network. It's I, a lovely thing. I think these types of systems are the future, of course, and um, I would imagine we will see more of them. And this is why we're discussing it. I guess it's fun to talk about more than anything yeah. else. And I must state again that this is very close. This is very close. It will take a few years of work. I mean, I'd say three or four years we could have it, depending on the, the push from society, depending on how much society people do understand. And again, it doesn't need everyone to understand it. Once a few people come to terms with it and want to build it, then once it's built, it's everywhere. So, you know, and uh, there isn't much anyone can do to compete against something like this. It would pretty much overwhelm. It would disrupt the disruptors almost immediately because you can't compete with something that doesn't even take profit. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like, just efficient, evolving, works as this layer, which, which is serving the services that everyone actually wants, you know, as efficiently as possible. Perhaps we'll see one of these services like Alpha City or whatever develop into this. I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens. At least I would say this to anyone developing um, these kind of ideas. Make sure that if you're developing, you're developing in concert with everyone else so that one day maybe your projects merge or your different versions of the same thing and think more about protocol rather than trying to lock everyone into one thing, of course. That would be something I would suggest to fellow developers around the world who are the people who will ultimately... The universal on. taxi mesh layer, which net. everyone can just build up the net. The taxi net. Nice idea. Cool.